ever build what you thought was a secure application, only to realize later that your authentication wasn't as bulletproof as you thought. You are not alone. Over 80% of data breaches are caused by weak authentication. But here's the good news. If you're using NestJS, implementing rock-solid authentication doesn't have to be complicated. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to create a secure authentication system in NestJS that you can trust. By the end of this tutorial, you'll know not just how to implement authentication, but understand why every piece matters. Let's dive in. Before we jump into code, let's understand what authentication really is. Think of authentication like the security guard at an exclusive event. Just having a ticket isn't enough. You need to prove you are the person whose name is on the ticket. Let me give you a real world example. When you go to your bank's ATM, you need two things, your card and your PIN. The card tells the bank who you claim to be, but the PIN proves that you are really that person. Without this two-step process, anyone could take your card and access your money. Authentication is your application's first line of defense. It ensures that users are who they claim to be. Private data stays private. Users can only access what they are authorized to see and system resources are protected from unauthorized access. NestJS supports several authentication strategies and choosing the right one is crucial. Let's break down the most popular ones. JWT or JSON Web Token is like a digital ID card issued by the server. When you log in, the server verifies your credentials and hands you a token. This token is your all access pass to the application. For every subsequent request, you show this pass to prove your identity. Let's see how does it works. First, client sends user credentials to the server. The server then validates the user credentials and generates a token and send back to the client. The client stores the token in local storage and includes the token in auth header of each request to access protected routes. The server then validates this token before allowing access to the data that user has requested. With session-based authentication, the server maintains a session for each logged in user. It sends a session ID to the client, typically stored in a cookie. The server uses this session ID to identify the user for every request. Now let's see how session-based authentication works. First, user sends their credentials and the server verifies the user and creates a session in memory or database. A session ID is stored in a cookie and sent to the client. For every protected request post that, the client sends this session ID which is stored in a cookie. The server then checks the session store or database to validate the user. If all good, then response is sent to the client. OAuth allows users to log in using a third-party identity provider like Google, Facebook or GitHub. Instead of managing credentials, your app trusts the provider to handle authentication. Let's see how OAuth works. First, when user logs in with Google, it returns an auth code to the client app after successful authentication. The client app then sends this auth code along with user details to auth server, which grants an access token. The client app then uses this access token to request data from database. So which one to use? Use JWT for modern apps that prioritize scalability and statelessness. Use sessions for apps where strict token revocation is needed or where you prefer server-side control. Use OAuth for apps where third-party login makes sense, like social media integrations. For modern apps, JWT is the most recommended option because of its simplicity, speed, and ability to work across devices and platforms. And that's what we'll be focusing on today. Let's move on to the actual implementation. I have created a sample NestJS project for this tutorial. Let's first start with installing the required packages. Next, we'll create auth module. Inside the auth module, let's configure the JWT module. We'll configure secret which will be used to generate token and token expiration will be one day. Next, let's create a JWT strategy. This is where we define how incoming tokens will be validated. The JWT strategy class extends passport strategy. This means it's implementing the JWT strategy. Think of it like creating a custom security guard with specific instructions on how to check JWT tokens. In constructor, we check where to find the JWT in the request. 
from auth header as bearer token looks for the token in the authorization header. Ignore expiration means password will check if the token has expired. If yes, then authentication will fail. If it is set to true, which is not recommended, passport won't check for the token expiration. The secret key is used to verify the token signature. It should match the key used to sign the token during login. Make sure to store it in environment variable. Just for this tutorial, I'm using a simple plain string. The validate method runs after the token has been verified. Payload is the decoded JWT payload. The return payload is attached to the request header. We can also add additional validations here if we want. Also, we need to import JWT strategy class in auth module and add in providers. Next, let's create a JWT auth card. This class extends auth card class. In auth card class, we pass the strategy we want to use. Like in this case, we want to use JWT strategy, so we pass JWT here. In case we want to use local strategy, we'll pass local here, and then we have to implement local strategy class. But what are guards in NetJS? Guards in NetJS are like security checkpoints. They determine if a request should proceed to the route handler or be blocked. Let's see how this auth guard works behind the scenes. When a request comes in, it first passes through guard before proceeding to route handler. First, it extracts the auth token from header. Then it validates the token using define strategy. Like in our case, it's JWT strategy. If the token is valid, it attaches user, which is fetched from payload, to request. Otherwise, it will throw unauthorized exception. Next, let's see auth service. Here, I've created two methods. First is validate user, which validates if it's a valid user. It takes username provided in request and checks that in database. Here, instead of using a database, I'm using a JSON file where I've stored few users. If it finds user, it'll return it. Otherwise, it'll return null. Second method is login, which creates a payload using user info and then cites JWT token using this payload and sets expiry time of one day for this token. Next, we need a login endpoint in auth controller. Login method will first call validate user function in auth service to check if it's a valid user. Then it will call login function which will create the token and return it. This token is then returned to the client. Next, let's create user module. In user controller, I've created a profile endpoint which is protected using JWT auth card. This means in order to access this endpoint, we need a valid access token. Now, let's open Postman and hit our login endpoint with a valid username and password and see if we get our access token. Next, let's call profile endpoint without access token first. See, it throws 401. Now, let's add token in header, then hit the endpoint. The request is validated successfully and we get user details. This current setup is basic and a great starting point. But it has some limitations. While access tokens should expire quickly for security reasons, it requires users to log in repeatedly, which isn't practical. If you ever need to invalidate a token, there's no built-in way to do that with just an access token. Let's take this authentication system to the next level by adding refresh tokens. With refresh tokens, we can issue short-lived access tokens to reduce security risks while maintaining a seamless user experience. We can easily renew access tokens without forcing the user to log in again. Also, we can implement token revocation, which adds another layer of security. Let's see how refresh tokens work. When a user logs in, the server issues two tokens, a short-lived access token for authentication and a longer-lived refresh token to get new access token when the old one expires. The client stores this token securely, typically the access token in memory and the refresh token in a secure HTTP-only cookie or another storage method. The client then uses this access token to access the resource. When the access token expires, instead of logging the user out, the client sends the refresh token to a special endpoint. The server validates the refresh token and if valid, issues a new access token. Let's implement this. In auth service, I've removed login method and added two new methods. First is generate tokens, which will generate access token with less expiry time and refresh token with larger expiry time. Second method is refresh access token, which access refresh tokens from cookies, decodes it, and generates a new access token. 
Also, I'm storing the refresh token in a map against user ID. You can store it in DB or in a dedicated token storage. But for this tutorial, I'm using it in memory storage. Next, in auth controller, I have updated login endpoint to return access token to client and store refresh token in a HTTP only cookie. This ensures that token cannot be accessed via JavaScript and reduces exposure to cross site scripting attacks. Also, it's auto included in the secure request without manual handling. I've created a new refresh endpoint which is used to generate new tokens. Access token is sent to the client and refresh token is saved against user ID. This way we are doing a refresh token rotation which invalidates the old token and creates a new one which reduces potential attacks via token interception. Now, let's hit our login endpoint again. We got our access token. Let's use this token to access profile endpoint. Okay, we can access data. Also, if we see login request in console, in response cookies, we can see refresh token. Let's say access token expires and when user tries to access some endpoint, they get 401. In this case, rather than showing user 401 and asking them to re-log in, what we can do is, we can call this refresh endpoint, which will generate a new access token and refresh token. And we can use this access token to call the protected endpoints. Now, let's talk about rate limiting, which is an important security feature that every authentication system should have. Imagine someone trying to break into your application by repeatedly guessing usernames and passwords. This is called a brute force attack. Without rate limiting, they could send thousands of requests in seconds, potentially compromising user accounts and server. Now, rate limiting acts as a protective gate. It limits the number of requests a user can make to a specific endpoint over a given time. NestJS makes it super simple to implement rate limiting using Throttler module. Let's see how we can configure this in our app. First, we need to install NestJS Throttler package. Then, we can import this package in controller and add it as a guard on login and refresh endpoint. Next, we need to configure this module in auth module file. We set TTL to 60 and limit to 3, which means max 3 requests allowed by user per minute. Let's open Postman and try this. Let's hit login endpoint multiple times. See, within 1 minute if I hit more than 3 requests, I get 4 to 9. Similarly, we can try a refresh endpoint as well. We'll get same response.